Ordnance Department, by constantly instructing its personnel in proper handling and fusing of bombs, impresses upon them the importance of this procedure incident to safe delivery of the complete bomb to the selected service point. Thus, when a bombardment mission is anticipated, Ordnance Department troops are ready to fill requisitions for the necessary bombs without delay. From Ordnance Dumps, in this instance a strong vault called an igloo, bombs of the size and quantities desired can be obtained. From the interior of the igloo, which is usually cool and dark, ordnance personnel take the bombs to the trailer for the first major step in delivery. Before anything else can be done, the bombs must be removed from the point of storage to an isolated point for fusing. Here, where the fuses are kept in sealed metal containers, the entire fusing operation is performed under the best conditions possible to ensure maximum safety for personnel and protection for property. After the bomb is fused, it is most important to thread the arming wire properly through both bomb lugs. The swivel loop, which is to be attached to a shackle, is centered between the two lugs. In threading the wire through the nose fuse, it is necessary to use a Fonstock clip over the end of the wire to hold it in position. In threading the arming wire through the tail fuse, the wire passes through a hole in a restraining pin, which is held secure by a tight spring. After arming wires are attached, the fused bombs start their final journey on trailers. Before leaving the bomb storage area, however, each load is checked at the gate by a guard. The bombs are then taken to the airplane bomb service point, designated by the airdrome commander. Here, ordnance personnel begin delivery at a place called the spotting point, which is usually in front of the airplane receiving the bomb. The ordnance department, responsible for having the bombs at the point on time, spares no effort to ensure prompt delivery. The bombs are placed parallel to the fuselage under the bomb bay. Bombs of 100 pounds and less are then loaded by hand, while bombs of more than 100 pounds are loaded by using the bomb platform and bomb lift truck. At this point, the Air Corps takes over from the Ordnance Department. The bombardier or armorer supervises the actual loading beginning with an inspection. It is important that all fins are fastened securely. None must be broken or bent. A bomb with defective fins will not be loaded. Bomb cases are examined for dents. Bent or cracked lugs also will disqualify a bomb. In the event practice bombs are to be used, the weight must be checked. None should be below the specified weight. A bomb damaged in any manner will never be loaded in an airplane.
Prior to loading bombs on an airplane, all shackles are removed from the racks. The bombardier or armorer makes an operating inspection of the bomb racks and release linkage. A check is made of the control handle, which is moved from the locked to the selective position. Bomb rack stations desired for use are cocked by moving the release lever to the front. On the bombardier's instrument panel, corresponding lights will indicate the cocking of these stations. The bombardier's control handle is then moved to the locked position and an effort is made to release stations electrically. The control handle is returned to selective and through the electric release on the instrument panel, the cocked stations are tripped consecutively from the bottom up. If the intervalometer is to be used, the control switch should be placed at train prior to the test just described. The arming handle is checked similarly for efficient operation. With the assurance that all controls and racks are in good working condition, the desired stations are cocked again. The manual control handle will now be placed at the locked position and the arming handle placed at safe while loading. For convenience in loading, a shackle is attached to each bomb while it's still on the ground. Care is exercised in attaching the swivel loop of the arming wire to the shackle. Before lifting bombs, each shackle will be turned toward the rack. In this manner, the bomb may be lifted to the station level and slightly rolled toward the station until the shackle is in position to engage the hooks on the rack. The shackle is held secure by a spring safety latch. On the shackle, the arming wire hook and the trigger lever engage corresponding levers on the rack. Whenever practicable, the bomb rack will be loaded from the bottom up, placing bombs only on stations designated for bombs of that particular size. The loading personnel will inspect the shackles to make sure they are locked in place by safety latches on the bomb rack. Any slack in the arming wire is removed and after pushing the fond stock clips close to the fuse, the wire is cut at a point three inches beyond the clips. This operation should always be performed with a pair of sharp pliers to avoid burring the ends of the wire. The next operation is the removal of cotter keys known as safety pins. Attached to each pin is an instruction tag directing removal only when all other loading operations have been completed. If the bombardier desires to release a bomb which will detonate, he moves the arming handle to the position of arm. This will move the arming wire hook forward locking the arming wire of the bomb to the shackle. Upon release of the bomb, the arming wire is pulled out. If, however, the bombardier desires to release a bomb as a dud, he will move the arming handle to safe, which will unlock the arming wire from the shackle, and permit it to be released with the bomb. Although airplanes awaiting the delivery of bombs normally are supplied by the Ordnance Department with bombs fully fused and ready to be loaded, 
There may be times when the necessary number of ordnance men are not available. During war operations, the tactical and weather situation may be such that Air Corps personnel must fuse the bombs after placing them on racks in the airplane. Such fusing of bombs in an airplane is to be avoided whenever possible. For its far-flung variety of missions, the Air Corps naturally requires many different sizes of bombs. In the case of thousand pound bombs, it will be noted that only four are loaded on a trailer. In preparation for loading heavy bombs, the steel hoisting cables in the bomb bay are carefully lowered by the operators to help lift the bomb to the racks. The cables must be unwound slowly to prevent tangling. A bomb sling is then placed under the bomb. The hoist cables are attached and lifted slightly to make sure that the bomb is carefully balanced. When the shackle is placed in position, the arming wire is attached and the shackle is canted toward the rack. During the hoisting, the Air Corps loading personnel should inspect frequently to see that each bomb is lifted without interference from any part of the bomb bay. If an increase in effort to turn the handles of the crane is noted, the process should stop immediately. An alarm should be sounded to all personnel in the bomb bay and an immediate investigation conducted to determine the cause. After the correction of any unnatural conditions, hoisting may be continued until it is obvious that the shackle can be engaged. After engagement, the cable is slacked off slightly and the bomb shaken so as to make sure it is attached securely. Safety precautions while loading bombs should be routine. First and foremost, avoid standing beneath bombs while hoisting them into position. Inspect the hoist drums frequently to make sure the cables are tracking properly with each turn resting snugly beside the preceding turn. If it becomes necessary to lower a bomb from the rack, proceed slowly. Under no circumstance permit spinning of the hoist handle. With these precautions always in mind, the hazards of loading can be reduced to a minimum. After the loading process has been completed, the bombardier makes his final inspection. He makes sure that only stations containing bombs are caught and that each bomb is suspended properly. Arming wires are checked to ensure their proper installation in the tail fuse and in the nose fuse. The bombardier assures himself that all safety pins have been removed from all bombs on the rack. All fins and fuses are inspected for proper installation. The next point of inspection is the instrument panel in the bombardier's cockpit. Only indicator lights corresponding to loaded stations make the on signal. Any student bombardier scheduled for flight should be reminded that accidental release of bombs has occurred during flight 
because of the student's tampering with one of the controls prior to the intentional release of bombs. Regardless of the types of airplanes to be loaded, or the size of bombs to be handled, whether they are 2,000 pound demolition, 100 pound demolition, or the small fragmentation type, the job of loading bombs is exacting in its nature and requires strict observance of all safety precautions. Only carefully trained personnel should be entrusted with the duties of fusing, handling, and loading bombs on airplanes. With the completion of the loading, the bombardier receives his clearance signal from a member of the ground crew and closes the bomb bay doors. contributes much to the success of bombing missions. The bombardier in each airplane must have complete control of the bombs in the bomb bay at all times. Riding in the foremost cockpit, he will have such control at his fingertips only if the bombs are properly loaded so they can be released with the greatest accuracy. <laughs> 